Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the After Resources Creating IPv6 Pools Learning Byte. Alright, so here is our topology. There's a few devices I want to point out and then we'll talk about their links. And first we have the devices in the IP fabric, the Spine 1, Spine 2, Leaf 1, Leaf 2, Leaf 3, and Border Leaf devices. Now, with those devices, you might notice that they have some links between each other. Each leaf is connected to the spine devices, that is each spine. So basically each leaf has two links, and those links go to each of the spine devices. And those are colored red. And you can see up on the top left corner in the legend there that the internal links, which is also colored red, has a certain IPv6 subnet. And you can see the subnet there, 2001, colon DB8, colon FEC0, colon colon slash 120. And so we are going to be using that subnet that is assigned to that IPv6 address pool. That is that internal links IPv6 address pool. And there I have IP address pools up there. That should be IPv6 address pools. So just keep that in mind. Uh, sorry about that. And then, so, okay, so what we're doing there is those links that are in the IP fabric that are color coded red are going to be pulling IPv6 addresses from that internal links IPv6 pool. So keep that in mind. That's how that will work. And uh, something else to keep in mind is this learning byte is just focusing on creating these IP pools. We're not actually going to be assigning the IP pools in this learning byte, the IPv6 pools, that is. And uh, I will be covering how to assign resources like that in uh, a different learning byte. So keep a lookout for that. Okay, so then we have the server links. Uh, the server links, which are color coded in green, you can see them at the bottom of the topology. The servers are all connected into the leaves. And those links are going to be using the server links IPv6 address pool. And you can see the, the address pool. What we're using there is 2001 colon DB8 colon FEC1 uh, slash 120. And so there'll be 256 available IPv6 addresses that can be assigned uh, in that pool. And then we have the external links uh, IPv6 pool. And you can see here that there's only one external link from the border leaf to the external router. And that'll be using that IPv6 subnet that is shown there. And then we have two other IPv6 pools. We have the spine loopbacks and leaf loopbacks. And those aren't shown on the topology, like the other links, because those are assigned to the individual spine and leaf devices. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the Aftra web interface and get this going. All right, so here is the Aftra web interface. We want to go to resources on the sidebar, and then we want to go to IPv6 pools. And here we have nothing configured. So we need to click the create IPv6 pool button. And the first pool we need to create is the internal links pool. And then we need to specify the subnet. And then we can click the create another checkbox since we need to create more than one of these IPv6 pools and then click the create button and then it creates the pool and then we get the create IPv6 pool window again that is blank because we're creating a new pool. So let's create the server links pool and that is this IP address or this subnet that is. And again, we'll check the create another box and click create. And then we're going to create the external links pool and use this subnet. And then again, we'll check create another and click create. And then we'll create the spine loopbacks pool and use this subnet. And we do have one more to create, but I'm not going to use the create another checkbox. I'm just going to create that subnet or that pool. 
because I want to uh, duplicate a pool. I want to show the cloning process. And so we have four of the pools created, and we need to create that leaf loopbacks pool. Well, you might look at this and say, well, the leaf's loopback pool is very similar to the spine loopbacks pool in name and also subnet. And so let's just clone that. And so for the spine loopbacks, we can select the clone button. And you can see here it pulls up something that uh, the only difference here is it's got copy on the end of this. So it's slightly different for the name. But we'll just change this to leaf and the delete copy. And then all we need to do is change the subnet and click clone. And when it does that, it drops you into the details of that new IPv6 pool. And so you can see here that we have the name, we have the status, it's not in use, we haven't assigned it to anything. Uh, we see total usage, 0 out of 256, and per subnet usage is going to be the same since we only have one subnet. And then you can see the subnet that we're actually using as well. And here you could edit it, you can clone it, or you could delete it. So let's go back to IPv6 pools. And you kind of see the same output here, but you see for all the pools, for example, with server links, you can see the total usage per subnet as well as the actual subnet in use and the status. And you can edit, clone, or delete it from here. Now, one thing I do want to show is that if we edit, say, the leaf loopbacks IPv6 pool, we can add an additional subnet. We have the one subnet, but say we have a lot of leaves and we need to be pulling from two different subnets. We can click add subnet. So we'll just say 2001 colon db8 colon db3 colon colon slash 120 and click update. And now you can see that the leaf loopbacks has two subnets. That IPv6 pool has two subnets. And we look at total usage, shows zero out of 512. And then we can look at the per subnet usage, and both of those show zero out of 256. Now, one other thing I do want to show here is the query option. We can query on two different options, the pool name and the status. Now, the status, all we have here is just not in use since all the pools are not in use here. But this is really good if you have pools that are in use and not in use and you want to look at one or the other. And so we can select that and click apply. And it's really not going to change anything in our output because they're all not in use. And so we go back here, we can clear that, and we can uh, filter on pool name. For example, if we just want to look at pools that aren't associated with loopbacks, we can just search on links since that's how we named them. Click apply here, and it only shows the pools that have links in the name. And the pools that we specified that have loopbacks in the name are not shown. And so we can clear this query to get everything back. And the one last thing I do want to show is how to delete a pool. Since these pools aren't in use, it's pretty straightforward. You can just click the delete button over here. You can delete it again for anything else and just continue the process to delete all the pools that you don't want to have. All right, so that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to create IPv6 pools with AppStra. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.